see, I don't think I have any blind people here. I had a blind person on my presentation as well. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, uh, presentation is called Creating a Cloud-like Infrastructure with FreeBSD. My name is Sean Webb, and I work for Wayfair. I'm a uh, security analyst and software engineer. So, a little bit of, in, uh, of an intro. Sorry, I should keep on there. I'm an independent security researcher. I've been uh, doing independent security research for the past uh, uh, five or six years now. It's been a hobby of mine. I, uh, I'm a tech blogger. I write mainly uh, uh, blog entries about FreeBSD and Open Indiana and a tool I, I created called Lib Hijack. And uh, I'm actually speaking about Lib Hijack tomorrow. It's a pretty fun tool to use. <clears throat> Lots of interesting research there. But uh, after, I, I just barely uploaded my these slides up to uh, my tech blog. So uh, if you want the slides, you can just download it from there. I've got my uh, business cards here. So uh, that I have on the back of the card, I've written my personal info, so the URL for my tech blog, and my email address. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Like I said, I'm a security engineer and security uh, and, soft, and software engineer and security analyst for Wayfair. And uh, Wayfair is in a large online retailer. Um, if you've purchased anything for your home through Amazon, chances are you've purchased from us. We used to be called CSN stores. Uh, I, I, I find this pretty ironic and funny, but I have to put this because of our lawyers. Um, any beliefs, opinions, etc., are mine and do not necessarily reflect those of my employer, even though my employer's name is like right here. So, on every single slide. Um, as a software engineer uh, I, I, and security analyst, some of my tasks are to, uh, to figure out big pieces of our, of our system, our puzzle. And we've got a pretty large infrastructure at Wafer. We use hundreds of free BSD VMs inside of uh, Zen inside of a Zen cloud, uh, hosted by you know, Zen, uh, Citrix Zen servers. And uh, we use Citri Citrix Zen Center to manage those servers. And it's pretty, it's pretty much a very crappy task to do. Uh, we, we run many different VMs. We run mostly FreeBSD and a lot of Windows and a few Linux. <coughs> and um, right now our code base, our, our website is we're transitioning from classic ASP to uh, PHP. So we're, trans, uh, we're getting away from Windows and onto FreeBSD. So um, FreeBSD has this, has this really cool feature called jails. And, um, and uh, it's, we don't utilize them at Wayfair at all. Um, we utilize full-on VMs in Citrix as end server. And I, I hate Zen server. I, I really hate Zen server because um, its console is based on VNC, and so whenever you try to, whenever you go to the the VM's console and you type a character, the console doesn't repaint correctly, and so you have to actually close out of the management, uh, the Zen Center management software, reopen it, and wait five minutes for the infrastructure to resync itself and then type another character in the console, close send center, reopen it, wait five minutes, and it's, it takes about five hours to set up a VM. We use VM templates. We've, we, we set up a VM, we template it, and then we clone that template, but there's still last minute things to do after creating that template, like setting up the networking, and then once networking is set up, then it runs all its scripts and stuff, but it takes, it takes about five hours to get to that point. And uh, using FreeBSD jails, um, I figured out a solution uh, to turn that five hours down to about a quarter of a second. So um, the, the, the solution that we're going to talk about uh, uh, today is going to combine many different features, about three different distinct features of FreeBSD to create a cloud-like infrastructure. And Wayfair will eventually, we're eventually going to switch. We're going to still use Zen Center because we still need to run other VMs, uh, uh, other OSs. So 
Linux and Windows. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll restructure that so all our FreeBSD machines get compacted into one FreeBSD machine. We use hundreds of jails. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in depth later. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to start off with a few definitions. And then we're going to talk about what is virtualization, because there's different types of virtualization. And we're going to cons uh, concern ourselves with two different types of virtualization. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, quick history, uh, a little bit of history between uh, jails, virtual networking, and ZFS inside of FreeBSD. We're going to talk a little bit about why jails, uh, why should we choose jails rather than full-on uh, uh, VMs, you know, like what uh, ESXi provides or Zen Center. Then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, setting up virtual networking, how to get our virtual networking stack set up in FreeBSD. And we're going to talk a little bit about basic jailing, how to get a, a, a template jail set up and clone that template jail so we can uh, spin up new jails instantly. Uh, then we'll talk about combining those three, and the combination of those three is what creates our cloud-like infrastructure. And we're going to talk about uh, future work. There's a lot of work to do in the future. There's still a bunch of things that need to happen for this to be fully production ready. As, of, as it stands right now, I consider this uh, dev, uh, dev environment ready. So if you want to roll this out to your dev environments, that's great. But if you want to roll it out in production, there is still some work to be done. So some definitions. FreeBSD is an awesome POSIX compliant 4.4 BSD Lite based operating system. Now I say it's 4.4 BSD Lite based, but it's basically evolved pretty much since then. Uh, uh, you know, it's like us evolving from apes. Uh, we're much more refined and a lot less hairy. Well, some of us are. <laughs> uh, virtual network um, is a completely virtualized TCP IP stack for use within the OS itself. So usually, you know, you have your physical NIC that has a physical Cat5, Cat6, or, uh, or fiber cable connected to a switch or a router or, you know, that kind of thing. A virtual network is a virtual NIC you know, it, it has its own virtual network cable plugged into a virtual switch. It has its own virtual routing tables. Um, and so it's basically the paradigm of a, virtu of a physical network just virtualized within the operating system. ZFS is the god of file systems. It was developed by Sun. And Oracle purchased Sun, I think last year, maybe the year before. I think two years ago. Um, and uh, Oracle closed the source after Z pool v28. I'm going to stop here and go on a tangent. A lot of people think that because Oracle closed the source, that ZFS is dead. ZFS is far from dead. There are uh, many, many contributions coming, uh, uh, coming from the open source community. Delphix, for one, uh, is, a, is a company. They, they specialize in, in uh, data integrity and data storage solutions. And uh, they've been working on some awesome ZFS enhancements that apply to uh, open source ZFS implementations uh, that currently run ZPool v28. So ZFS is far from dead. No matter what anyone else says, if someone says ZFS is dead, that is 100% incorrect. Jail is OS based, a jail, a free BSD jail is OS based virtualization. So, uh, We'll talk about what OS-based virtualization is a little bit. Drupal is a popular open source CM uh, content management solution. And so I created, for my solution, I created uh, a Drupal module that, um, that basically acts like Z uh, Citrix Zen Center. Um, uh, it's not as feature complete. Um, I've only been working on it for the past couple months. And uh, it's, it's it's very, very usable, but it's still there's still a lot of work to be done on it. So we're going to talk a little bit about what is virtualization. Virtualization is the process by which one or more virtual machines run on a single physical server. So when you run, you, typically, before virtualization, you have one server, and that runs one operating system. One, you can only run one operating system at a time. So you can only run Linux or Windows.
Windows or FreeBSD or Solaris, just that operating system that works in virtualization, as you guys <coughs> know, um, allows you to run multiple operating systems simultaneously. So you can run FreeBSD, you can run Linux, you can run Windows, Solaris, all at the same time. Hardware virtualization virtualizes everything, all the way down from the keyboard to uh, Apache. Everything from your CPU to the software stack. Everything is emulated. Everything is virtualized. And uh, within these past few years, it's been uh, really the virtualization stack uh, has been has been really enhanced so that you're not emulating nearly as much. But the concept is the same that uh, every single piece of hardware is emulated um, in, in essence. Some examples of that would be Zen or VirtualBox or VMware. OS level, OS level virtualization virtualizes only the operating system. So your VMs, your virtual machines, share the same kernel and they share the same hardware. They know that they're virtualized and they, they work together um, to, to share resources. And, uh, and so, um, so yeah, that is OS level virtualization. And free BSD jails is OS level virtualization. <coughs> so you, when you use OS level virtualization, you cannot run uh, uh, VMs of a different operating system. So if you're using OS level virtualization with free BSD, your VMs are free BSD. Um, same thing with Linux, they're the same kernel, the same everything. Except you can have different user lands. That's a bit more of a, uh, that's more advanced than this presentation will cover. You can run, technically you can run a 32-bit jail inside of a 64-bit host, <coughs> and you can do some other cool things. You can run a Linux jail in, in a FreeBSD environment. It's pretty cool. So jails was first introduced into FreeBSD uh, 4 by a very talented developer named Paul Pennycamp. And uh, he continues working on the FreeBSD project even today. And, uh, and he uh, has given some many great um, uh, solutions to, the, to today's technical problems. Jails are continuously being improved. Um, even though they are very, very solid and very, uh, uh, they can be used very well right now, there's still a lot of improvements that have been made and still need. You can kind of think of it as a secure replacement for CHroot, but it, it's much more than that. We'll see that it's much more than that um, in my demos at the end of the presentation. It is OS-based virtualization. It inspired Solaris Zones containers. This presentation in its whole, the concepts can be applied directly <coughs> over to Solaris. Um, these features uh, uh, inspired uh, many Solaris features. And so Solaris, actually, because it's paid development rather than hobbyist, um, they were actually able to get a more mature implementation of jails. They call it zones. Um, and so that's actually what I use at home is, is Open Indiana, which is a, a flavor of Open Solaris. So uh, history of virtual networking. <coughs> There's an ongoing project in the FreeBSD kernel called vImage, and that is uh, overall to virtualize FreeBSD's kernel. Not only to virtualize the networking stack, but to virtualize <coughs> other things like System 5 IPC calls and, and uh, process, uh, process address spaces, and, uh, or naming namespaces. And, uh, what we're going to uh, talk about today is VNet, the virtual networking stack. Uh, part of vImage. That's really the only part that we're, we care about today. Work started in FreeBSD 7 and um, didn't become an official feature until 9.0 release. You'll see a lot of blogs uh, about people using it in 8, uh, version 8, but it was pretty unstable back then. And it's a lot more stable these days. It's analogous to Solaris Crossbow, and it's not as feature complete as Crossbow. I love Crossbow. Crossbow, you can, uh, and VNet as well, but Crossbow especially, makes it really easy to uh, emulate different networks. So you can emulate uh, uh, a 10 gig e uh, Ethernet network, and you can emulate uh, packet 
packet single or packet loss and and bandwidth limitations and all that kind of stuff is integrated directly into cross for one load. Um, sorry, uh, is this similar to the virtual distributed Ethernet project? Is that Linux? Um, I don't know that VDE is tied to any one thing. It's oh. kind of like VMware's, you set up a switch. I gotcha. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, can I think of it from, like that? Or? From what it sounds like, probably. I, I, I don't have any experience with that. Well, but it sounds like probably. Does VMage or Crossbow, is it a kernel space thing? Or it is. Work? Okay, VDE is. runs in user space. Yes, it does. So they are different in that respect. Okay. Well, it's kind of, it's exposed <coughs> to the user space. So it is kernel space drivers, but it's exposed to the user space. We'll see uh, how, to, how to work with virtual networking. This is just the history of it, basically. So there are some use reasons to use the, the virtual networking. With traditional jails, you don't have to use virtual networking. You can just you can use a, a physical IP direct on the network, and and you can actually do uh, you can emulate a virtual network in Stack and FreeBSD without virtual uh, without VNet, but it's kind of tedious and it sucks. Um, but when you use vimage, you get network security, much more enhanced network security. You can actually. Uh, We'll, we'll see how to create a, a, a virtual layer three switch, and you can add like span devices on that layer three switch, and you can uh, you can do a lot of things. Uh, you can do spanning tree protocol. You can <coughs> prevent um, you can prevent uh, promiscuous mode. You can do a lot of cool things with VMage uh, security wise. You can also NAT your jails. You don't have to do this, but for purposes of this pre presentation. Because I'm using a wireless connection, you can only bind one IP address to a wireless connection, so I can't bridge these jails uh, in my demo. We're going to NAT the jails, and I'll show you how to do the NATing. It's really simple. Uh, again, you don't have to do it. You can bridge directly onto the physical network, but it's nice to do. Um, and especially, it's nice to do because um, if you're setting up a template jail, and in, inside of a production network, necessarily want template jails to have uh, uh, a physical, uh, a dedicated IP. Because um, you're just going to spin up that template jail, set it up, set up some configuration files, download some packages, and then it's going to remain turned off for <coughs> months and months at a time until you go to update the, the template. And, uh, and so natting can be really useful in that respect. A little bit of history in ZFS. It is truly the god of files file systems. If, if you are uh, not convinced of that by me just saying it, uh, there's a great three-hour presentation by, I think it's Brian Cantrell um, of Sun, and he dives into how ZFS works, and it is truly amazing. I just going to say, yeah, I mean, I absolutely love ZFS. We're running it right now down at the Hackerspace in Provo for our, our main storage solution down there. It's an absolute wonderful nice. system to just work with. What OS? We're using um, ZFS Cooter right now, so it's FreeBS 9 based. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, 9 based with uh, ZFS 28. So nice. that's. Way cool. So ZFS has many, many different features too. You can do instant snapshotting clones, and these snapshots are, are inexpensive. Inexpensive CPU wise, inexpensive RAM for RAM, inexpensive for. Uh, disk space consumption, they're awesome. And you can clone these snapshots. Once you take a snapshot, you can clone the snapshot instantly. It takes about, actually it's not instantly, it's about maybe 10 milliseconds, a quarter of a second. So, um, but it is, it is so amazing. Um, you can use transparent encryption, transparent compression. There's a lot of features, uh, NFS v4 ACLs, I could go on forever. Um, ZFS was first integrated on April 6, 2007, into FreeBSD. Uh, ZPool v28 was merged into 8 stable and 9 release. So uh, FreeBSD just barely released like a week or two ago, uh, version 8.3, which is the last version in its 8 series. And that includes ZPool v28 and 9.0 release um, containing ZPool v28. Many wonderful features and many new and powerful features are coming from Delphix and Joint.
So when you combine all of these three, you get a basic cloud-like infrastructure. You get ZF, you use ZFS for <coughs> instant snapshots and clones, VNet for virtual uh, networks, dedicated networking stack for each shells, including route tables, uh, jails for uh, for VMs. Why jails though? Why not? Why not? You know, we we already have existing uh, infrastructure for uh, for cloud. You know, cloud hosting, Citrix Zen Center, um, VMware ESXi, and those are free. Um, at least ESXi is. I don't know about Citrix's solution, but um, but why jails? Well, jails are. It's much more CPU efficient. Uh, and it's much, and it uses very little disk space consumption. Like uh, my my jails at work, my development jails um, uh, take up about about I don't know 50 megs, whereas um, our development VMs uh, for the rest of the developers inside of Citrix, uh, we we allocate minimum four gigs of, of disk space and and two gigs of memory. They jails. Are as little take up as little CPU memory and disk space consumption uh, as they need to, and they can expand. You can cap them. You can do disk quotas for each jails. So you can do uh, <coughs> CPU limiting, and you can uh, do memory limiting um, for each jails. But by default, um, with a basic cloud-like infrastructure, um, they, they 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 scale very 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 well. There are some gotchas, though. Uh, PF is a very popular firewall for FreeBSD and OpenBSD. And I think NetBSD has it too, but I could be wrong on that. And uh, when you mix, when you use VNet, um, you cannot use PF currently. Um, there are, there is a major, a major desire within the community to have PF support with VNet. So I'm sure there is a developer uh, doing that. Uh, implementing that right now, and uh, I'm sure that will happen eventually. But there is still a firewall you can use uh, called IPFW, which is FreeBSD's native firewall. It was created specifically for FreeBSD, and I don't think any other operating system includes IPFW. I think it, it's uh, maybe OS 10. I think OS 10 uses PF. Uh, so now we're going to dive into how to get how to get this stuff set up. So you need a special kernel configuration. Uh, you need to in your kernel configuration you need to enable vImage and IPFW. And you need to set up your firewall. Um, I don't think a firewall is 100% uh, necessary. Um, you just have to set. Technically, I think the only thing that you have to set is enabling. Um, uh, uh, the gateway enable. Uh, it's a sysctl that makes FreeBSD act as a as a routing as a router. And uh, you can set up NAT. Again, it's not required, but it's very useful, especially for this presentation. We'll use NAT. So at the top here, if you guys can't see this, um, my slides are online on my tech blog, so feel free to download them, and you'll have all this. Uh, all these commands. So inside the, the top is the kernel config. Um, so you enable options uh, vimage, IP firewall, and IP, IP divert. And then uh, you recompile the kernel and install the new kernel, and there you go. You've got virtual networking enabled in your kernel. And then in your initialization script uh, configuration file, your rc.com file, set gateway enabled to yes. And firewall enabled to yes. That'll this enables IPFW, not PF. And you set the firewall type to open. You can change that if you want, but uh, I'm just doing some simple defaults for this presentation. And enable the NAT daemon and change the and set the interface. And you can change that if you want to, to whatever your uh, WAN interface is. Uh, set up virtual networking. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a, a bridge. And you can think of a bridge as a layer 3 switch in FreeBSD, a bridge device. And then we'll create what are called ePair devices in FreeBSD. ePair devices, that is our VNet device. Uh, when you enabled, when you did the uh, options vImage, that gives you the ePair device. 
And when you create, it, when you create a single e-pair device, you actually create a pair of two if configurable devices. And so you create, uh, the name of the scheme is the name e-pair, and then the number, and then A and B. And so if we create e-pair zero, then we create e-pair zero, or sorry, e-pair zero A and e-pair zero B. And we can if config both of those devices. You can think of that of those two devices as two ends of an Ethernet cable. You plug one end into the bridge, which is our layer three switch, and you plug the other end into the jail. So uh, I usually, you can swap them. It's, it doesn't matter which way you do, but I usually do the A device inside the bridge and the B device in the jail. And you can do, you can switch that if you want. I don't recommend it just because it doesn't seem natural that way. So here's how you create the bridge. If config bridge zero create. And you can you can do any number if you want. You can do 60 or two or whatever number you want. But for this presentation, we're just going to stick with zero devices, uh, the zero device. And then you create the the e pair device. And then next, this next command, uh, we're going to set give the bridge an IP. And that way, uh, the jails are going to set down here. The jails are going to set their default route to the IP of the bridge, and that is for networking. Um, you don't have to give bridges IPs uh, if you're doing bridging onto physical networks or onto, onto other virtual networks. Um, but for purposes of this presentation, we're doing NAT, which means we're going to give the bridge an IP. And then we add the device, the ePair 0A device, to the bridge, and then we're bringing the ePair 0A device up. And so the next commands down here, assume that the jail is already booted up. And in the next few slides, I'll show you how to boot up a jail. And uh, uh, so you boot up the jail, and then you plug in the B device, uh, ePair 0B, into the jail. So the jail has to be booted up before you plug the, the ePair device into it. So this first command here, if config ePair 0B, VNet, and then the name of the jail. So each jail has a name. So uh, in this presentation, we'll create a template jail and we'll name the jail template. And so uh, when we create, when we assign the ePair device to the template jail, it will be if config ePair 0B VNet template. And then this executes a command inside of a jail, the jexec command executes command inside of a jail. So inside the jail, we're going to run if config ePair 0B inet 2.168.2.2, so that's giving it an IP address. And then we'll set the route. And then networking is enabled and fully online, and that jail is fully online. So to start up a uh, basic jail, what we're going to do is we're going to use ZFS to create a template jail data set. And then once, once our jail is fully configured and, and we have our config scripts how we want it, we have everything set up how we want it, We'll, we'll shut down the jail and create a snapshot of it. And then we can do attack of the clones. We can clone that snapshot over and over and over again to create new jails. So we'll install a world and distribution. So to create our, our template jail, we'll install a world and distribution. World is, um, world is your user land binary, so like the LS binary and, uh, and SU, that kind of stuff. And the distribution is like your uh, ATC file, so your password file and, and that kind of stuff, your uh, ATC scale directory, that kind of stuff. And then we'll install the ports tree. You don't have to install the ports tree, but I'm going to show you how, just so that you know how. And then you install the individual ports. And these are the commands that you run to do it. So this first command here, we're just setting a, a, a variable to hold the path of where our, te our template jail is going to reside on the file system, just to make it easier on the eyes. <coughs> and then this command here creates the, the parent data set for our template jail, or for our, all of our jails. And this right here, ZFS create tank jails template, that actually creates the, the data set for our uh, template jail. And then we're going to uh, change directory to the source tree. And then we're, we'll install world. Of course, you need to build world first if you haven't already. This presentation assumes you already did, just for <coughs> purposes. And, uh, and then you make distribution with the destination directory uh, of the path of where your jail resides uh, on the file system. And then 
this right here grabs the ports tree and extracts it inside of the jail. And uh, then you set the, the VNS resolution, so you set your resolve.com. We're just going to set it in this presentation to 8.8.8.8, uh, Google's VNS server. Uh, and then you create, like, you, did, you do the, the next commands are just basically copies of the VNet commands I showed you in the previous slides. So you just create you create the bridge, give an IP, create the ePair device, add the ePair device to the bridge, bring the ePair device up. And then this is how you boot up a jail right here, these, these next few commands. So you mount, in your jails you have to mount the dev file system. And uh, this is kind of confusing. So each jail can have their own dev file system. And uh, uh, you don't have to expose any dev devices to it. You can expose any uh, the, the devices that you want. And it could be zero, it could be all of them, it could be some of them. But you should have DevFS mounted in, in, the, in the template jail, at least. Uh, when you're building ports, uh, there's some ports that, that require certain uh, dev devices. And they're like the dev null device. And then nullfs is a way cool uh, uh, file system driver. Um, what it does, it's basically like an enhanced symlink. So this is the user ports in the, this is the ports tree inside the host. And then we're going to basically do uh, uh, an enhanced symlink to the, the template jails user ports. So that makes it so that you don't have to uh, uh, spend hundreds of megs on each jail to just to have their own ports tree. And so this right here is actually what boots up the, the jail. The command is jail-c, which uh, stands for create, and it's going to be of type vnet. We're going to give it a host name of template, and then the jail's name is template, and then it, this is the path where it resides on the file system. And this persist uh, flag here, that's just there because it looks pretty. So you have to have it, but I don't know why, but that's, yeah, you have to have it. So then you uh, plug the ePair zero B, plug the B ePair device into the template jet into the jail. So if config ePair zero B VNet template, and then inside of the, the template jail, you uh, if config ePair zero B INET line two dot one six eight dot two dot two, and add the default route. In this case, one nine two dot one six eight dot twenty one dot. Or sorry, that's a little bit of a typo. My work, I use 21, the 21 subnet at work, and did a two subnet for the presentation. Anyways, uh, so this, we're going to start a shell inside the temp, inside the jail, and uh, now we're going to change directory to the ports tree, and uh, we're going to change to the security, the sudo port, and we're going to install it, and then clean all the, all the object files, and then remove And then we'll exit the jail. We'll we'll uh, s snapshot the jail after it's all after it's all set up. After we've installed all our ports and configured them, all that kind of stuff. We'll snapshot it. So you run zfs snapshot. Then the name of the data the data set, which is in this case is tink slash jails slash template, uh, and then the at <coughs> symbol, and then the name of the snapshot. In this case, I usually do date time snap date time snaps. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty cool. And then you can, for new jails, you just clone it. Clone that snapshot. So you use ZFS clone, the name of the data set and the name of the snapshot, uh, and then the name of the data set for the new jail. So uh, FreeBSD has this way cool uh, IPFW module called DummyNet. And you can combine VNet with DummyNet. And we do this uh, at Wayfair. We actively do this at Wayfair. Because uh, running a, a web, um, uh, all we do is we, we have our, you know, we have our um, web presence, just our website. And we need to be able to test uh, bandwidth limitations and different uh, queue schemes and simulate packet loss and packet delays. Like, some of our, we do have people that still use dial-up, I don't know why, but they still do. Um, 
they probably have an outhouse, but they still have dial up. Um, or you know, simulated packet loss and packet delay. So if you're like on a, on, if you're using your phone to go to our, our site, and packet loss and packet delays are are pretty common with uh, cellular cellular networks. And uh, so you can you can mix DummyNet with VNet, but DummyNet can be a little bit buggy when fully mixed with VNet. And I need to file a, a bug report. I need to file a couple bug reports. Um, so what you want to do, because it can be uh, a little bit buggy, you want to use one DummyNet. Uh, without VNet, if you just use DummyNet, uh, like normally, uh, if you don't combine it with VNet, just use it by itself. You can do bandwidth limitation, queuing, simulated packet loss, packet delays, all in the same DummyNet pipe, all in the same, uh, all in one. But when you mix it with VNet, you can only do one of those per DummyNet pipe. So if you want to do bandwidth limitation and packet delays, uh, at the same time, then you have to have multiple dummy net pipes. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to do, but it's just a little bit of a gotcha. So uh, that's a lot of commands to, to remember. All of those commands, there's a, there's a lot to remember, um, and it takes a lot of time to to uh, get all of that memorized. And there's some problems. Uh, unfortunately, uh, FreeBSD's uh, initialization script, scripts, their rc.d system, does not support VNet jails. It does support jails in and of, it, in and of themselves, but not when mixed with VNet. And so, um, and so, when if you if you're rebooting your server, you have to spin up these VNet jails all by hand. So you have to run uh, if config bridge or create create the bridge, create the epr device, spin up the jail, plug everything in all that kind of stuff by hand. So every time your server reboots, and if you have hundreds of VMs like uh, Wayfair does. Um, just out of curiosity, does Easy Jail um, help to alleviate any of your issues? Or? I do not know. I used Easy Jail once, and then I decided I hated it. <laughs> so, um, uh, because it, it does things, it's like cPanel. Mm -hmm. And if anyone here knows cPanel, <laughs> They'd rather do things that I probably shouldn't say here because it's not safe for work. Right, right. And, uh, and so um, I'm not a fan of EasyJail. And so from what I can tell, EasyJail does not support VNet yet, um, but there is desire for that. Um, and there is desire for uh, FreeBSD's RC.D system, their initialization scripts, to support VNet jails. And uh, so that is coming down the line. But um, it's a little bit complicated, and there's a, a few interesting politics that are going on, and so uh, support isn't fully there just yet. It'll probably be supported within the next few months, but um, that will be in the current branch, right? What's that? That will be in the current branch, right? Yeah, and it'll probably be MFC uh, back to nine stable. So it'll probably be depending on when the 9.1 release uh, is tagged. It'll probably be in 9.1, but um, but don't quote me on that. I'm not a I'm not a FreeBSD developer. I am, no, no, but no, I'm no. not. I, I follow all the lists. Yeah. Stuff, so okay. Just, I'm not a committer. I am a developer, but I'm not a committer. I still have to actually submit patches upstream. So. Okay. Um, don't quote me on anything official. Um, but and there are people reporting kernel panics destroying <coughs> epr devices. I have had one or two kernel panics, um, but the, the frequency is pretty low. I've, I've created and destroyed EPR devices about 200, 250 times, and out of that, and out of the, that that amount, I've only had one or two kernel panics. And because of that, I don't recommend that VNet is used in production. It is 100%. Uh, it can be used in, in development. So if if it's not a mission critical system, I mean, you can argue development is mission. -critical. It's okay that it just randomly reboots. Uh, it takes you know five minutes of time to reboot. So, um, but you can't do that with production. You have to have 100% uptime with production. So it's not 100% ready for production in this case yet. Have you been able to track down the cause? No, um, I haven't at least. Uh, my system, my setup is such that I don't, I can't do kernel dumps, um, and so. Uh, I haven't been able to track that down.
nor would I would probably have to do that on my spare time. Like if my employer would, would uh, pay for me to do that. Uh, Zen HVM plus V image doesn't work. So you can. Okay, so this is kind of hard to explain. You can run uh, V image inside of a Zen guest, um, and that's just fine. But you have to use the generic kernel for that. You can't use the Zen kernel. FreeBSD's Zen HVM, that's their pair of virtualized kernel. Um, I found this bug and I need to actually do some digging uh, and file a bug report. And uh, it works. It, it works. Like you can create the ePair devices, you can create the bridge. Uh, it just, it's when you try to destroy an ePair device, it brings down networking 100% for all the jails and for the host. So like you can't even ping the host. So, um, and, it, and it works up until you try to destroy an ePair device. So as long as you never ever destroy an ePair device, it does work. But otherwise, if, if you do destroy ePair devices, it doesn't work. So um, uh, it does work. If you're using a FreeBSD Zen VM, um, if you're running a FreeBSD DOM0 or DOM U uh, VM, um, you can use the generic, generic kernel, and that's what we do at Wayfair right now. So to make it easy, uh, because like I said, that's a lot of commands to remember, and because there's no initialization script support just yet, you have to boot all these jails up by hand when your server reboots. And so what I've done is I've written a Drupal 7 module to administer these, uh, these jails. It makes it really, really easy. And uh, it's pretty much it's it's pretty much feature complete. It's it's very usable. Um, I do recommend it never be used in production, uh, at least in its current state. But it is completely 100% usable, and I've I still have some plans for it. Uh, ePair devices you can do uh, if config aliases, so you can have multiple IP addresses on one given ePair device, and. Uh, and so my project doesn't support that yet. So if you want jails that have multiple IPs, you have to assign it multiple ePair devices. And so um, uh, eventually I'll support if config aliases so you can do multiple IPs. And that would be very useful for when you're doing uh, one IP is uh, IPv4 and the other IP is IPv6. So you don't have to have one device for IPv4, one device for IPv6, you can actually combine them. Anyways, I'm not doing any sort of login right now, so I need to do better login. I need to uh, report to Drupal 7's uh, watchdog log whenever someone uh, reboots a jail or takes a snapshot of it or deletes a snapshot or upgrades upgrades it or you know that kind of thing. So um, I need to actually have better login. Um, I need better privilege separation right now because uh, my module is running inside of PHP inside of a web server, so I have it running inside of Apache um, on my dev box. Um, that Apache user, and I'm not using SU exec, so uh, the whole Apache user needs passwordless pseudo access to certain privileged commands. And uh, that's not that secure. So I need to figure out, uh, probably, uh, I probably need to take a look at SU exec and uh, take a look at that better privilege separation so we can get some actual security. And it's mainly this thing that, that I really, really, that makes me really cautious about implementing it outside of that. So because of this, that's a big security risk to not implement it in production. Eventually, I want to support an external API. So I want to be able to uh, make it so that people can write their own programs and just call my module as a backend rather than having to use my module as the point-and-click interface. They can write their own point-and-click interface and, uh, and use my module just as a backend. I did have one use case out of about 75 use cases where I didn't want VNet, and so I'm thinking about making VNet optional, but I need, for me to be convinced of that, I need to have one more use case pop up. So. Uh, I just spin that you know, that jail up by hand. Um, but um, eventually, I want to support IPv6. All my database tables, the schema, the, the columns inside the database tables, are all of the right size and length. Um, and so that supports IPv6. But the commands I'm running 
are uh, IPv4 centric. So what I need to do is just, it's pretty simple what I need to do is just make it so I detect the length of the string, the length of the IP address, or, or whether it has colons in it or some, probably a regular expression, and, uh, and support IPv6. So it'll be, it, it's probably like a five, ten minute fix, I just need to do it. And Citrix Zen Center, you can, you can, so you have multiple physical Citrix Zen servers, and you use one program, Zen Center, to manage all of those servers. And uh, I want my, my Drupal 7 module to be set up the same way, eventually, so that you can have one uh, installation of this Drupal 7 uh, module um, and administer all these gel hosts. So, uh, so you can say, and, and, and say this gel will be started on this host, and this gel will be started here, and that kind of stuff. And so, I will not support non-ZFS setups. Because ZFS is the god of file systems, and to convince people that Linux sucks, um, I will not support non-ZFS setups. Um, uh, if you want to support UFS, if you want to support NTFS or ext 4 if you want to do the same thing with the different file systems, or with a different file system, uh, fork my code, it's on GitHub, and uh, never ever send me a patch file for a non-ZFS uh, non uh, setup. I'm accepting patch files for any, or pull requests for any other feature, just not non-ZFS setups. So I am on GitHub, and, uh, and uh, that's where the, the uh, module resides. Um, or it's in the ports tree, and uh, I submitted a new port like two weeks ago, but the dude who is assigned to it is really busy. He just had a, uh, uh, his wife just had a daughter, and so he's a little bit busy with uh, personal life. So uh, the, I just released a new version of my gel admin Drupal module, uh, but it's n the new the new version is not in ports, but it is on GitHub, of course. Uh, I did do a git tag, and I actually did upload a, a tar a tarball up on GitHub. So I released version 0 0.3, and, it, and 0 0.3 is probably the first version of it where it's it's really really usable um, outside of just my own my own use case. I will release a C version 2 because I've got a little uh, GUI list netbook. I've got my netbook here with me. Uh, and, uh, and so I don't have a browser on it, so I can't, I can't use a browser to, you know, I can't use a Drupal 7 because that requires a browser. And that requires a GUI. So I'm writing a, a, an NCURSES version of my Drupal 7 module. And I'm going to have both of them will be. Uh, Completely uh, be developed in parallel, and the features will be in sync with each other. So, some real-world examples: uh, Wayfair will be switching to using VNet gels for development environments. Um, I'm currently using hundreds of FreeBSD VMs in a Zen Center environment, um, and we'll restructure. So, every every developer, we have about 50 developers right now. 30 to 50, and each developer has their own dedicated FreeBSD VM in, inside of Zen. And that's really, really not efficient. So we're going to restructure that to something more efficient, to a single FreeBSD. We're still going to use Zen Center because we still need to run other operating systems. Um, but we're going to use a single FreeBSD Zen Center VM, and we'll run my Drupal 7 module. And then that VM will run hundreds of VNet jails. Rather than hundreds of full-on VMs in Zen, <coughs> we're going to switch to hundreds of jails. So some future work. Um, I need to submit a bug report for that. For this, I'll probably do it in my spare time. Uh, the Zen HVM kernel and the image just don't mix well. I think it's because the Zen HVM kernel itself, uh, because it's using the Zen para virtualized networking device, that networking device is a virtual device. And so I think different types of virtual networking devices are conflicting with each other and, and not playing well with each other. Obviously, we need better uh, RC.d support, and that will come soon, hopefully. Um, we just have to get over the politics and get a, uh, get a uh, an implementation going here. D 
D-Trace is awesome. I am in love with D-Trace. Um, it, it, it's, uh, I want D-Trace support like Solaris Zones have D-Trace support. You can do all sorts of metrics uh, on these on these zones uh, in Solaris. You can do metrics on, on their I.O. and the, and the CPU and, and that kind of thing. And take a look at Joint. Um, Joint um, uh, uses Open Indiana, which has full Solaris Zone D-Trace support. And they, they provide major metrics and heat maps, and it's really, really integrated nicely together. And you can do all sorts of way freaking cool things with D-Trace. Complete virtualization. Some resources are still shared. Um, 127.0.0.1.IP actually is not shared. I just, uh, I just verified today, actually right before the talk, and I did not update the slide. Um, uh, each jail, you know, uh, has its own IPs, and actually each jail, um, it used to be that the 127.0.0.1, even inside the jail, still pointed to everything. So it was the host and each jail and the host, and so each jail shared 127.0.0.1. That's no longer the case with VNet. But some resources are still shared, like system by IBC calls. And because of that, um, things like PostgreSQL server um, have some issues. You can only run one instance of Postgre uh, server um, uh, in on a given on a given uh, on a given host, no matter how many jails there are. You can only run one instance of Postgre, actually. Is that one instance per port? No. You can't, um, you can't. One instance total. That's not separate ports. That's kind of a fib. It's one, ins one instance per user ID. So okay. um, that's one of the other resources that are still shared is user IDs are still shared um, too. And so user ID 50 um, is still, if you have user ID 50, like let's say 50 is the www, www user in one jail, and 50 is the MySQL user in another jail, those, conceptually speaking, to FreeBSD in total, in and of itself, um, it, it views user ID 50 as the same thing. It's not virtualized yet, so, you know, there's still things, you know, like that. Complete virtualization still needs to work. Uh, puppet classes. Uh, we use Puppet heavily at Wayfair, and I've created a few Puppet classes, but I'm, I'm pretty much a noob when it comes to Puppets. So, um, uh, there is um, there is desire for me to, to write puppet classes, but it's pretty low on my priority list. Live migration would be awesome with with jails, and there was a, 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 a hosting company that implemented live migration, but they actually went under, and uh, and their work never got merged upstream, so we don't have live migration, and I would love to see that that happen. So we can get a true cloud-like infrastructure. This is kind of a cloud-like infrastructure in its infancy. Um, and I would love to see Linux's KVM ported to to, uh, to FreeBSD and run inside of a jail. But we need KV, KVM first. And there again, there was work to port Linux's KVM to FreeBSD, and they got it in pretty much an alpha state. But that project ran out of funding and uh, never made it upstream. So. That project was abandoned. So, if someone wants to pick that up, that'd be awesome. So, I've, I've got a couple demos here, and uh, and we're gonna uh, do we're gonna demo. So, this is my FreeBSD VM locally here. So, you can see we have we have a, a pool, uh, a ZFS pool named Tank, and uh, we have already. A uh, uh, data set for our jails that holds all our jails. So I'm going to actually just do full SQL. So what we're going to do is we're going to take create our template data set. And then we're going to CD to the source tree. So this is going to install world, so that's going to uh, install all the uh, all of our shared libraries, all of our uh, binaries that we run. It'll take it'll take a couple minutes, and uh, 
It's pretty fun. I, I run actually Open Solaris. I run Open Indiana at home, and I run um, uh, I run basically the same type of infrastructure. I run zones and that kind of stuff uh, at, at home. Um, I want to switch to FreeBSD, but I actually kind of killed one of my SATA ports on my motherboard, pulled yanked the cord too hard, and uh, I think I um, uh, killed one of the soldering connections. And uh, Open Indiana runs fine on it, but FreeBSD complains about the about the chipset and uh, and it says it can't find the hard drives. So so I gotta actually I'm gonna do a full up full upgrade to I run AMD Phenom 2 right now on that server. I'm gonna upgrade to Intel based. So just gotta get the funding for that. Um, and uh, but I actually run basically I don't run the Drupal module, so I do all of terminal, but I run basically the same uh, infrastructure as you would run for FreeBSD. It's what I just, what I'm about to show you with FreeBSD. <coughs> so as you can tell, um, instantiating a new jail can take, or creating a new jail from scratch can take a little bit of time. Um, uh, and so um, right now it takes Wayfair, even though we use template VMs, um, like I said, it takes us about it takes us a few hours to to uh, get go from template VM to fully set up a uh, web environment for our developers, and uh, and this it'll 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 take about a quarter of a second. Um, you do the initial setup, which is what we're doing here, and then create the template. You snapshot the template, and then you can clone the template like none other. And it's very There's, uh, I, I say clone the template. Right now my Drupal module doesn't, it clones the template from a ZFS standpoint, but it doesn't clone the settings of that template, so the network configuration. And so, um, and so uh, it still takes, instead of, I, I, I'm kind of fibbing when, it, it'll, when I say it'll take just a, a quarter of a second to fully clone a, a jail, but um, you'll see how quick it is how easy it is to do that. So, so, so for some of us, somewhat new to FreeBSD, is this like a depackaging step? Um, no, this right here is installing your, your base operating system. You can think of this as kind of like Gen 2 type of thing where you have to compile the kernel and the, the base operating system, your, your, your basic user land, uh, the LS, here we go, the LS, command and SU and that kind of stuff. So now we're going to make this distribution. Inside the template. And that just installs the the, uh, the ETC files. So uh, like your mail aliases and ppp.com and all your template ETC files. That's, uh, yeah, Etsy files, however you want to say that. So now what we're going to do, because now the base operating system is installed inside of JIT. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the, the, uh, the network. So if I just run if config, you can see that I just have two, uh, two physical NICs connected to this. This is just the NAT uh, for to get out onto the public network. And this is a host network in, in VirtualBox, so I can SSH directly into it. As, uh, virtual box won't let me uh, SSH into that 10 dot address, but I can SSH into the 192 address. So, um, so we'll create the bridge. Oops. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sign the bridge an IP. Again, you don't have to do this unless you are doing that. If you're doing that, you do have to do this. And then we'll create the ePair devices. So, oh. so if 
I just run if config, you see that we have the bridge. This is our layer three switch. It has an IP address. And you can see that we now have two ePair devices. Even though we just created, uh, we just did one if config command for one device, it actually gave us two, an, an A device and a B device. So what we're going to do is we're going to now plug the A device into the into the switch. Oops. And we're going to bring the A device up. You don't give the A device an IP. Um, it's just it's just it's just a pipe. It, uh, it's just a an end of an Ethernet. And so now we're going to boot up our jail. So now we can see our, uh, our, our template jail is running. And since we're using VNet, jail, the JLS command does not report an IP address because the, the, the jail is responsible for managing that ePair device. Well, not yet because we haven't assigned, we haven't plugged the ePair device into the jail. Now the ePair device is plugged into the jail. So now we're going to execute a shell inside of the jail. So if I run if config inside of the jail, it shows us, it tells us we have our own LO, uh, our own loopback device. And which is not shared between uh, jails. It's it's for it's assigned to this jail, and we have our own, uh, the ePair zero B device. And even though I say that the ePair devices can be thought of just as a, as an Ethernet cable, you do give the ePair zero the, the B device an IP. So if you can pick ePair zero B. So now we're going to add the route, and uh, we'll set our name server and set our name uh, DNS server to Google's. With any luck, we can ping Google. So we're fully online. The jail is fully online. So what we're going to do? Uh, okay. So Vim is not installed uh, by default. VI is installed, but not Vim. I'm a Vim user, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, because I'm a Vim user, I want every jail to have Vim installed. So we're gonna install Vim. So if I start up Vim now, it's installed. So now our, we're going we're gonna to call that template jail fully set up because of time constraints. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a snapshot of that jail. Okay, so you can see that we, we did the snapshot, and we gave it a, uh, uh, and we named the snapshot after the current date and time. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new jail. And uh, so now, so now in, in our file system, we have two jails now. We have our uh, I love FBSD jails jail, and we have a template jail. Um, it's pretty, pretty freaking simple. So we, so now we can just. And the name of the 
gel and the host name doesn't have to match, but that's how I do it, because that's just what makes sense to me. So now, so we can ping the gateway, we can ping our template jail, and we can ping Google. And of course, you can set up firewall rules so that if you have different <coughs> virtual networks, but they can't cross talk to each other. So if you want, if you, uh, like if you're doing this for, for different clients, you of course don't want client A to talk to client B since they're completely unrelated. Uh, so you can set some firewall rules there with IPFW and, and, uh, and do some security work there. So now, because we cloned from the template jail, Vim is already installed. Uh, it, it's basically, it, it is a full on clone uh, file system wise of uh, the template jail. So that's that's that. So that's how we create our template jails. Let me I need So that's how you do that by hand and now I'm going to show you the the uh, the Drupal module. We actually have to close it up. Oh do we? Yeah. Oh shoot. I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay. Well, the Drupal module is pretty freaking sweet. It does all this, and it, and it administers all of your jails. Um, uh, uh, it, it administers all the, the networking and all that kind of stuff in a very easy and intuitive way. So that is my presentation. Thank you very much.